I'm Frank Pacho. I'm developer advocate at Yugabyte. Yugabyte DB is a distributed Postgres. We use the SQL layer, we use Postgres for the SQL layer, but on a distributed storage kind of spanner like architecture uh, for high availability resilience. Uh, but basically, because we use Postgres on the query layer, we can use Postgres extensions that are on the, on the SQL layer. And we install by default PG in plan. I really think that everyone should install it. Uh, it's easy to install. It may not be easy to understand exactly how it works because there are uh, some things that are not really well documented. And then here, the goal of this session is to go through all the, all the little things that you should know to use it uh, correctly. Of course, uh, interrupt me whenever you want if you have any question. I, th the goal is really to explain how to use it correctly, not really to convince you to use it. I have only one slide to explain you why we need ints, even in Postgres, all databases offer that by default. In Postgres, not by default, there is an extension. Um, this is the way when I arrived at the airport, so I want to come there, I ask Google, and you can trust blindly Google and select the best pass, but Google Maps also let you choose some options, like maybe you prefer the train, maybe you prefer to walk, uh, even within there, you have some option like fewer transfers in train. Uh, choose which kind of transport you prefer, and you can also change the route if you have more knowledge about the traffic than Google Maps uh, has. You have this possibility, so you have something that provides you with the fastest path to go somewhere, but you may want at least to change to see what if I take the train, what if I want to go through this place. This is Google Map. The query planner in Postgres does exactly the same. It finds the optimal path to your data. It would make no sense to provide such thing for Google Map without those little options that you may want to choose. And in my opinion, it's the same for a query planner, for an optimizer. Even if most of the time it comes with the best result, at some point, at least you want to understand the plan chosen by uh, the query planner and do a what if. What if I use this index? Because you have created an index, it doesn't pick your index. You want to know why. Is this index usable? So what if I force it? to see if it is used, or just my index is not so good as I expected, or maybe the planner doesn't have many statistics. So we need more control on the query planner, maybe not in production except for some workarounds, but at least to understand an execution plan. And there is a nice extension for that. Uh, first, why int in SQL? SQL is a declarative language. SQL syntax doesn't tell the database how to get data. You just declare the result that you want from tables. For example, in the SQL language, there is nothing about indexes. This is an implementation detail that the, the optimizer can choose. So the SQL code will never tell the database where to start by this table, use this index. Um, but you may want to understand those shows, having more control on it. Also, some workarounds if you have a bad execution plan in production. Maybe the cause is a bug in Postgres, maybe the cause is bad statistics, but you need to fix that, and maybe you can fix the plan immediately and then think about the root cause later. And um, the, the, the query planner can choose, estimate the cardinalities and the cost only from the input that it has, basically the indexes and the statistics, and maybe you have more knowledge about your data. You know that you are querying with 
a lot of predicates in the wear clause, and maybe there is some correlation that the optimizer doesn't know. That can be also a case of using ints. So how to use that in Postgres where you don't have ints by default? You have an extension. This, this idea has never been accepted to be in the core of Postgres, but it's an extension that is quite easy to install. The documentation to install it is really easy, and there are RPMs, there are many ways, so I'm just showing how I installed it in a Docker image, just using the RPM. Look at the documentation to install it. On NuGa by DB, we install it by default, so it's all, always there. Uh, what is less documented is how it works, and this is where I will focus on. Um, so first, SQL is a declarative language, so anything that tells the database how to do it cannot be part of the SQL language. And this is why the ints are put in comments, because comments, you can do whatever that is not part of the SQL language. Special comments, they start with a plus. And the extension looks at the SQL text, find those special comments, and find the ints that are there, we will see examples. In which kind of statement, select, insert also, prepare, explain. Um, prepare because this is at that time that the execution plan is uh, set, not execute. And um, it's quite easy to understand how it works with that, but the most difficult is to understand that probably if, if you want to really control an execution plan, one single int may not be sufficient, and, and we will uh, see some examples of that. Okay, first, this special comment, where to put it? Usually I put it in front of the query. You can put it after some keywords, but only after those characters, this, this is what I've seen in the code. Basically, it, it can be helpful if you put it in front of the select, you can add an explain to see the plan before it, because explain and the format of explain uh, goes into those. But do not put it at the end, do not put it after, uh, after a while, always better uh, before, because this is how the extension looks at it. If there is any error in it, it will stop passing. That's also the problem. It is in comment, so you don't really have syntax checking with it. So be careful. We will see how to see if your int is used or not. Uh, but if there is anything, a syntax error in it, uh, then, of course, the int with the syntax error has no meaning, but also those that follow because the parsing stops. Uh, the comment is only a slash st uh, star, doesn't work with the da dash command. And most important, in the prepare statement, not the execute, when you execute a prepare statement, the plan may already be there, and the ints are there to change the plan. So this is in prepare statement. And if you have multiple statements in a command, you know that in Postgres you can run multiple SQL statements in a command. The int is common for the whole command. That can be misleading if you use that, because you will put an int that, that can be seen by multiple SQL statements. Um, those multi-statement commands are separated by semicolon. If you are in PSQL semicolon, you have to backslash it. So those are the little tricks that if you don't take care in special cases, you will see that maybe your int is not used, and that can help to understand why. Most of the ints that you will put will reference tables or indexes. Actually, they don't really reference the tables, the table name, but the alias. Because, for example, you may query multiple times the same table in a SQL statement with different aliases, and you may want to int differently for all of them. So you, you will find the alias in the um, int, and this one is case sensitive even without codes, 
which is a bit different from the SQL syntax, where if you don't put quotes, it's always lowercase. So just good to know if you use case sensitive aliases. Um, something very important, some hints that we will see, take a list of aliases. When you have such list, there is no order. Saying hash join ABC is exactly the same as CAB. I will uh, show that more in detail in the demo. And there are some ints, actually, there is only one, the leading int that defines the order of the joins. This one can be used with a list, not ordered, or can be used by specifying the order, and then you need a lot of nested parentheses. That's what we will see. It's the most difficult in thing, the, the join order, but it's also the most important in a SQL query. If you don't start with the right table, uh, you probably uh, have a bad execution plan. OK, something important for tables, you reference the alias. For indexes, you reference the alias and the name of the index. If you have a typo in the index name, so it's not the real index name, or just because you have put the index name but your DBA has changed the index name, uh, then the int is not used. For example, here, you see that I force an index and I see this very high cost. This is the way uh, you can see that the int is, is not taken. I will explain it later. But basically, I'm forcing an index, and it does a sequential scan. And that's just because I didn't use the right name for the index. If I put an int just saying I want an index scan for account without telling which index, it takes an index. But if I put the wrong index, it will not take any index. That can be dangerous. So be careful. You can do worse with an int, because here I try to use an index. And not only I'm not using my index, but I'm not using any index. Basically, when you use int, you will probably do an explain to be sure that the plan is what you wanted. Of course, there is a way to have some troubleshooting information to tell you that you have a syntax error in an int. By default, just syntax error are displayed as info, but you can ask for more verbose, and, uh, and it, can be, it can go to the log file, or you can put it uh, to, the, to the client. So, Quite good if you are not sure that your int is used or not. By setting it to verbose, you will get more information about the int is OK, but the table doesn't exist or, or the index doesn't exist. Most important to understand is that an int doesn't force anything. People think that with an int, they will force the usage of an index. The int doesn't force anything. It just sets a very high cost for what is not inted. For example, if your int says, I want to do a sequential scan, it will set a very high cost to index access, for example. And you can see that in the code of, uh, of it. Actually, it's in the code of, of Postgres because it uses the same when you set enable uh, index scan to false, for example. Uh, this is the very high cost that is set, which means that you may in something that is not possible, but if it's the only access path, it will use it, just putting a very high cost. But if there is nothing with a cheaper cost, it will not be used. Any questions so far? Anyone already using PGIN plan or having tried PGIN plan? Yeah? Any problem? Uh, do you find it easy or did you have to learn a lot? Basically, all those slides are things that I had to learn while using it. Huh? At, at some point, 
it must be deterministic. If you are using ints and you have the impression that it works sometimes and not uh, other times, then you have to uh, look at it. Yeah? Yeah, very good question. I said it's not for production. The problem is that in production, you probably don't rent 1,000 of SQL queries with ints that you may have to look at if you change the indexing, if you upgrade, whatever. So it's more that it's not easy to maintain in production. You can have, for example, you have a report and you can have a, a, a ints on it, uh, but you know it, it's documented. Uh, so this is why I said not used in production, but I use it in production on my session. If on my session I want to check a statement, I can use it in production. Of course, if you have pre-production that is the, the same as the production, do it, but it's safe to use it. It's more that it's difficult to maintain if you, the, the goal of a SQL database is that you don't have to uh, to define the access path to the, for, for all queries. So this is meant for more query optimization uh, while you're developing it. Uh, I, I, exactly. I, I, I use that a lot for query, query optimization. If I see an execution plan where I think it's not optimal, first, I want to be sure that my idea that there is another plan is good because the query planner may be wrong, but I may be wrong. So first, I force my plan to see how it behaves. And maybe I will realize, OK, my plan is better than why Postgres didn't pick uh, my plan. Or finally, my plan in, is not better. And, and then, yeah, at, at least I know. OK, then I have uh, some demos to, to show mostly what can be difficult with the join order, the join direction, and uh, some few things. Uh, this QR code goes to DB Fidel where the demo is, but I will do it on the terminal. So here I'm connected to Yugabyte just because it is installed by default and it works uh, exactly the same. I will create three tables because when you want to play with join orders, okay, already exists, yeah, sorry. So table A, table B, and table C. So, yeah, to play with join orders, it's having three is helpful to, to show all the combi uh, combination. So let's say that I just explain. So let me show you see my query below that I just copy pasted. I wanted to show the query without any int. So this one. Sorry, the screen is a bit small, but that's okay. So basically, I joined A, B, and C without mentioning anything in an int, so the query planner can come with any join method starting with any of those tables. And here, it has decided to start with C. I've put fruits as aliases just because you can. You, you don't have to do, to do that, but I find it easy, at least for demos. I don't do that in production, uh, but why not? So it starts with the table C and then joins to table B, and, de and then to A. OK, why not? Now let's say that I want to test another join method. So we have a leading int that lists the table the query planner considers in, in this order. So this says, uh, start to look at apple, then banana, then cherry. So I want to. A to B to C. OK, and then, so I've put that just in front of explain, select. I run that. So I wanted apple, banana, cherry. And what my int did, it has changed something. It's not the same execution plan. 
Actually, it did it. I was asking to join Apple and Banana, and it is joining Apple and Banana, and then the result is joined to Cherry. The thing is that with my int, that is there, I mentioned the order, but not the direction. So here, the query planner still has the choice to join Apple to Banana or Banana to Apple. So that's the, the first thing that is important to understand if you want to define exactly the join order with the direction. You need those nested par parentheses that tells, okay, first you join apple to banana, and then the result of it is joined to cherry. And with that, you can put cherry on the other way, and then it would change the join direction for, for, the, for the last join. Okay, if I run that, I am sure that it will join exactly in the order I want. So joining apple to banana and then the result of it to cherry. So that's a way to force the join order and direction with full inting with those nested parentheses. Now, Let's say that I want to change the join method. Here, it, it, it has decided to do a hash join for apple and, uh, to banana, and then a nested loop to cherry. Let's say that I want all hash joins there. And this is what I will use. It's a different int. So once you have the join order and direction, then you may want to decide which method is used, hash join. And there you have a list, and this list is not ordered. This list just say when the join goes uh, from apple to banana, you use a hash join. And this one says when you are joining those three tables, so because of this one, I know that it is apple to banana and then cherry, then use a hash join. So it's just a way to mention which join by mentioning the, the, the different tables. So here I expect an execution plan that does the same as we have seen, but with hash joins for all of them. So controlling the join order, direction, and method. And now the query planner will join in this order, but may decide to do sequential scan or index scan. With ints, I can force, so for each table, decide the access path to it. Let's say that I want an index on this scan when going to banana. So did it take my int? I have the join order, it goes to cherry, but I asked for index only scan, but it has decided an index scan. And that's simply because I don't have a covering index for that. It cannot do an index scan. So of course, if you int something that is not possible, it will not use it. If I create an index that includes all colons, and I run the same, I have an index on this scan. So check the execution plan to be sure that what you expect is there. If it's not there, maybe the int has a problem, or maybe just you are inting a path, an access path, that is not possible. Index scan and index on this scan are two different ints. It, it didn't fall back from index on this scan to index scan, just it was not able to do uh, index on this scan. And then has chosen what was, what was better for that. So now if I want to fully int the joins but also all access methods, I can add that I want a sequential scan for the last table. And here, let me zoom it so that we see the whole. Here, with a lot of ints, 
I am sure that this plan will always be this plan. Because the query planner has no other choice on the join order, direction, method, access pass. As long as the plan is possible, it will always use this plan. If I put less ints, maybe I will see the right execution plan, but still leaving the query planner the possibility to choose an hour, uh, another one. When statistics change, it can choose another one. So if you really want to force a plan, you want a lot of ints like that. But don't worry, I will explain you how you can be sure that you have enough ints. So what I call full inting. If you have n tables, n was three in my case, but you can have more. You need n minus one nested pairs within leading. First join, second join, etc. And then for each pair, you can define a join method. There are three join methods in Postgres, nested loop, as join, merge join. And then, so, yeah, and, and those one will have from two to n aliases. The first one will mention two tables, the second one will mention three tables, etc. And then for each table, so n times, you will have to define if you do a sequential scan, index scan, or index only scan. You can also, so with index scan, you mention a name, the index name. You can also use a regex. For example, if you have specific naming conventions for your indexes, you may use an uh, index. But you need, if you want to force exactly full eating, uh, to force an execution plan, you need that. So. If you look at all that, it means that if you count the parentheses, you should have 6 times n minus 2 closing parentheses, of course, opening parentheses, because they are the same. So with this, you know that you have probably fully entered your query. If you don't have this number, either my formula is wrong or you miss some hints. This is in the case where, for example, you, you, you need to work around something in production. You have a very complex report joining many tables with correlation between tables. The query planner has no clue after a few joins uh, how to estimate the statistic correctly and cannot come with it. Uh, you force the execution plan that you know is good and it's one report, you have documented that, that's okay. But you want to be sure that this plan will always be used and not with new data, new statistics, having another plan that comes with it, then in this, in this case you probably want to fully int it and you really force a plan. Any question on that? Before going further, this is the, the most important thing, the join order. Probably the estimation of an index access versus another one, probably the statistics are sufficient. The joins, the more you join and the more error it can make in the cost estimation, and at some point the estimation is bad and the join order may be different. And just to add, the join method also is very important. If the query planner thinks that you are joining three rows to five rows and decide for a nested loop, but finally you are joining one million rows to two million rows, then the consequence of it is not just that it will be uh, two times uh, slower. It, it can be 10 times 100 times uh, slower. Yeah, any question? Uh, slide. Where we had int between two hash joints, I don't remember the, the slide or the demo. Yeah. So here, here I'm just saying that it's the same. The syntax is the same without the leading int. It's not because you say. A, B, C in the hash join, that it will take them in order. 
only the leading int will define the order. So in the demo, for example, this one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Let's try. Yeah. So I do not define the first one, but the second one will be used. Uh, it is sufficient, except that the query planner then can choose something else. Okay, because I didn't say, uh, where is it? Yeah. This doesn't say as join between the three others. This says when you have joined those three ones, the last join is a as join. Yeah, because the order is not there. First, first you need to, to look at the leading. I join apple to banana. And then, if you want to define the method, you need to say, as join apple banana, or banana apple. Then the leading says the result of that joins to cherry. And then to define the join method, you just mention the three aliases involved there. It's just a way to say the third join, just yeah. But no, it's just saying when you are at the point where three tables are joined, then the last join is a last join. The previous one was defined by the other one. Yeah, it's a bit tricky. The, the, the most important is to understand that you have this leading one, and then for each pair, you, you have a method that, de that defines it with all of them. Yeah. It can be very long, but if the more tables you have, and maybe the, 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 the higher probability you have, of, uh, of needing ints, because the more tables you have, also the, 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 the less good are the estimations. Sorry, the first slide. Yeah, where you had the code to get the extension inside. Yeah. So not this one. The extension, PG in plan? Yeah. Well, if you Google for PG in plan, you will see the extension is developed by, by the um, open source uh, uh, team at NTT, and they use that in production. OK, let me look at the time. I have many other things that I can show you. But this was the most important. Sorry? Okay, I, I will show that uh, at, at the end. I will go back to the demo and show the, 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 the verbose thing. Yeah, I think we will have time. Uh, there are a few things that can be interesting. Or oh, maybe you had a question somewhere? No? Okay, interrupt me if you have any questions. So, with ints, you can force, yeah, try to force. The, the, the join order method, whatever. But you can do things that are more clever. The number one reason for a bad execution plan is bad estimation. Because it uses a model with statistics. It doesn't look at all data to, uh, to estimate the selectivity of the predicates. And again, the more complex are the predicates, the more difficult it is to estimate. If you combine a lot of or and ands, like you can find in a data warehouse, for example, then uh, the estimation is probably far from the reality. But rather than forcing a specific 
access path, you may force a specific cardinality. And there is a rose int that says when you join A to B, and this follows the same syntax, so if you have uh, four tables, the, the, the latest join will be ABCD. Uh, just set the cardinality estimated to whatever number. And then in the execution plan, you will see it. And you can do better, because if you force an hard-coded value and then your data evolves, cannot be really good. But you can put a factor on it. So here, I'm telling the query planner, OK, find the best plan, but be careful. When you join A, B, and C, usually you overestimate the cost. So whatever cost you come from, from the statistics, divide it by three. I can show you maybe quickly an example. Uh, here of the set int was well, not this one, sorry. So here I display the cost. I did the cost off before because the, 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 the line was too wide, but here it's, uh, we want to, to look at the cost. So here, sorry, where, where is it? Again, I didn't paste the right one, apparently. Do I have rows in, yeah. Here I'm forcing the number of rows. I'm saying when you join, um, Cherry to banana, you multiply by 999, same for that. Because I do not force the join order, I need to put something for all possible joins. And then when you join the free, whatever, you just force 666 as the cardinality. And probably we see a number of rows there. The result, the result, the join of all of them, 666. So you really force that. And this is more clever than forcing a plan, because the query planner will still decide for the plan, but will decide on adapted statistics. So that can be really useful. Something else that you can do with an int is setting a parameter. All the, 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 the query planner parameters that you can set in a session, you can set it in an int, and this has the advantage to, have, to reduce the scope to one statement. Here is an example. By default, Postgres doesn't do partition-wise join, which is very nice when you join two partition table um, partition on, on, on the join key. It's probably faster to join partition by partition. You use smaller uh, temporary tables, for example, or hash, uh, hash tables. Uh, but it's not enabled by default. If you want to set it for a specific query, you can do it with an int, without the risk of forgetting to set it back, without the risk that on a connection pool you have set on a session and it's not there. Usually, if you have a problem only with a query, you want the solution to be for the query. You don't want to, to change a parameter instance-wide just because you have found a problem in one query, because the side effects may be worse. So this is quite... Uh, useful just setting a parameter and for example if I want to disable all nested loops rather than defining the ints for all the joins I can set enable nested loop to false in the query with an int that's a possibility uh, but what we did there we added a comment in the SQL statement and with some applications, you cannot because the SQL is generated because the, it is uh, in an application that you cannot change. So for that, the PG in plan extension 
gives you the possibility to put the ints elsewhere, not in the statement itself, but in a table that is created when you create the extension. And in this table, you will put the SQL text normalized because you don't want to put it with all parameters values and the int. So this says that any time I run a select star from table where a equal a value and, uh, and, um, and, and, and uh, b is, is a bind variable uh, a parameter uh, in a prepared statement, then add this int to it. You can also define the application. You can set the application name and maybe the int you want to apply it, I don't know, for reporting, but you want to be sure that the OLTP doesn't use it. And if you set pgin plan enable int plan table on, then you have the overhead that for any statement that is passed, it will look at the table to see if it has some ints to add for this table. So you see two types of parameter. If you use prepared statement, you put dollar values. But the question mark is what PG implant replaces. Because you can do, you that, use that with prepared statement or with statement with literal. So be careful with that. It's really a dumb comparison on the text. So of course, if the real query has a space in addition to that, or simply as a, a semicolon at the end, it will not take it. It must be the exact matching of the query. O also, if you use an, if you add an explain in front of it, it will not take the query because the query doesn't have to explain. So this has many limitations, but can be a way to work around a problem in a production. Um, I had also the question how to int something that is in a view. You query a view, maybe it's a view on views on views, and the aliases are on the view. You cannot put an int in a view, but you can create a function to replace the view. So you, can, you cannot put an int in a view, you can put an int that references alias in the view when it is rewritten, but not very easy. If you really want to do something like in a view, you can use a SQL function. Uh, yeah, but you don't know the definition of my view. My view is probably a select, a join between demo one and demo two. And that works, yeah. Yeah, basically it's, it's, it's a layer on, on, on top, but... The problem, I cannot int within the view, but the, the view then as, as all the aliases, yeah. Mm. Yeah, this works, yeah. Um, also, I got the question with partitions, because when you partition a table, and then each partition has an index with a different name, so what do you reference in your int? Uh, what I've seen, I tested it in the case where we needed that, you can int with the global name, or you can also int with the partition name. But then it's difficult because you have many partitions and the partition name can change, and this is where you can use the regexp if you have a good naming convention for the indexes in your partition, then you can use that. It is tricky, so if you use that, it's probably a workaround. You probably don't want to build all your application on, on those things. Huh? Okay, um, then we will see what I mentioned about being more verbose. Let me just check. Uh, I must show that. So what was the last query that we have run? I will take another one. Maybe this one we will take. So 
Here, this is what I've set in my session. Oops. Sorry, when the screen is too small, I cannot go to the right one to copy paste it. So the debug is off. Client mes message notice. And OK. Uh, now, debug print was verbose, I think. And log. If I'm not sure, I will look at the slides, because that's also the reason I put that in the slides. And here, if I run a query, I should have more information like, of course, when it's verbose, it doesn't fit on the screen. <laughs> so what you can see interesting there, also, I've, I've set a lot of things in my session. I have, yeah, I, I don't need all of that. But basically, you can see how the ints are used what was used in my int, so what has been taken. Uh, let's say that I do a typo in one. For example, uh, here. Let's invent a hello join. So is there an error somewhere? Uh, int syntax error. There. So. And, and then you see that the used int are leading. And that's all. Because if I look back at this, so I had a syntax error there. Leading was passed, but what is behind the syntax error is not passed. So, yeah, you can troubleshoot the thing. Um, there is all, all, also a way. Do we see the query here? Or do we need more verbose? Yeah, int here. I have the query, and then if I have, if I want to know what I need to insert in the PG plan table, I want to see the normalized query. So if I, maybe, I don't know if I will have that way, yeah. Okay. I expected to see something normalized here, but not. Let me see table A, what I have there. Select star from A, where n equal 3. What I want to see is the normalized one, and I don't see the normalized one. I don't know why. But basically, you can see also if it has passed your query. So you have some information there. Um, probably not enough. What, what I, I can say about all that is that if this extension was accepted more, was accepted to be in the core of Postgres, then probably it would be better documented, evolve. For the moment, it's an extension that is used by those who maintain it, probably other companies, but there are not enough uh, usage to make everything work smoothly, user-friendly, and that's why there are some, some tricky things. To investigate on an execution plan, it's still very, very useful. So basically, what I think is that one day you will need an int. I'm saying that just because I've been doing a lot of consulting in different databases, at some point, you will need to understand an execution plan. At least, maybe not do that for the application queries, but at least connect and look at an execution plan and do a what if. 
If you have a problem in production, this is not the right time to compile an extension, install it. So if it is already installed, then you will be able to use it. There is no, nearly no overhead. Even if it has to, to, to load a, a library, it is very minimal because if it's disabled, it, it's not used. So this to say, if you install it, there is no bad consequences, and when you need it, it will be there. If you do not install it, it will not be there. Also, I don't know if I mentioned it here. Yeah, better install it before, but also better look at it, because it's not when you have a problem in production that you have to look, oh, how does it work, and find back my, my slides to see the different uh, syntax tricks, so good to use and then you know how to use it. And it can be a great tool to experiment, understand the query planner. <coughs> Just, you want to, you have read that between two versions of Postgres, something has, has been improved in the selectivity estimation, for example. Just check it with small tables and uh, check the two plans, compare the two plans. If it doesn't take the plan that you expect, run the two plans with ints and compare the cost. If Postgres has chosen one, it is because the cost was estimated lower. But then when you have the plan with the cost, you can see exactly at what point maybe the cost was not well estimated. So it's a, a great tool to, to, to investigate on all that. Do you have any question? Are you motivated to install it at least and test it, or maybe use it to answer some question, to verify something. It's quite easy to, to, to investigate a plan between two tables without it. Because if you have two tables, you have only one join method. So with the enable as join, enable nested loop, you can decide. But if you have many tables that you join, you don't want a parameter that will disable all nested loop or, or enable all, all ones. Yeah, question? Uh, for, uh, does for Sorry? So, uh, for, CTEs, does work? for CTEs, does it work? Yeah, it, it works the same. Basically, in a plan, I will come back to my demo screen. Where do I have a plan that is interesting? Yeah. Basically, what you need is to know the alias. When you have a lot of subqueries or cities, maybe the alias, for example, if you, if you query two tables with the same name or whatever, maybe the default alias will be different. But if you explain, you will always have the alias on it. So here, the explain mentions the alias, and this is the one that will be used. So if you have a doubt about the name of the alias, I don't know if I can quickly take an example. Let's say that I join, uh, not, yeah. I, I don't know, I have to think about it. But basically, um, there are some cases where you have a subquery and the alias name is generated by Postgres. You cannot guess it, but you can see it from the execution plan. And then you, you can use it with cities. Of course, in the limit of what is possible, if you use cities that are materialized, then it limits also the possibilities of, um, of joints. Yeah? So the question is about the usage in, um, in functions. Uh, I think you can use it only in SQL functions. I mean, of course, you can use it in PLSQL, but for the query itself. The, the idea of the function was really to, to do something similar to a view. But of course, you can use it anywhere where you have a SQL statement, except if the language interpreter eliminates the comments. 
I don't know any, but that can happen, that someone writes a language interpreter and thinking, okay, the comment is only for the coder and we do not execute that, and then in that case, it will not be used. I don't know if, if there are some extensions that do that, so I'll check that, but yeah, that's all. Okay, any question or, yeah? Uh, okay, uh, int that is not used because it was not possible. For example, if I int with an index name that doesn't exist? I think that's what we do. So valid int that uh, Let me just uh, select star from A. And... Yeah, if I say uh, index only scan A, yeah. A. I, I don't know where, where was the index. Okay, let, let me just get to the example I add. Create index, it's there. So I will drop this index. And the idea was to run this one where I entered index only, scan. index only scan, which was not possible. And let's see which clue we add here. So I see not use duplicating no. Do we have any information about this one? Maybe not. We know that it was not in the used one. Yeah, I, I just see that it is not in the used one. Oh, yeah, was used. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Another limit, yeah. Because here, here it was used maybe... Hmm? Yeah. If I create the index, and I run the same. Index only scan, and it's also in the used, so yeah. we'll check more, but I don't see a difference there, yeah. So, yeah, it, it is an extension that works on top of the, of the query planner without trying to change all the query planner, so it picks at some points where it can to change the cost. At least, I find, the, I find the verbose mode really good because I've been working a lot with Oracle that for long had no information at all about a, a int that was not used. So that's already very good compared to some other databases. Uh, but uh, yeah, it helps to debug, yeah. But doesn't give you um, the, the, the truth. Okay, we're just on time. If you have any questions, anyway, I'm there. If you have also questions about distributed Postgres like Yugabyte, I will, I will be really happy uh, to talk about it. Thank you very much.